ఓం నమస్తే టు ఆల్ టుడే వీఆర్ కొన బీ ఆన్ ది కన్క్లూసివ్ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ ది అడ్వైస్ వీ హ్యావ్ బీన్ గెటింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ మాతా లక్ష్మి regarding prosperity in the very first part we looked at the conversation between bhishma acharya and yudhishthira only a day or two ago we had ratha saptami and bhishma ashtami where we remembered the great bhishma acharya and in that first conversation yudhishthira's question was more pertaining to the places where lakshmi resides or where prosperity resides and that was found in a much later conversation in anushasana parva but then we switched to shanti parva which is the preceding chapter and an interesting question comes to yudhishthira's mind it doesn't matter where i am now is it possible for me to predict what will be my situation in the future will i be prosperous or not so we may be thinking that hey i am already a millionaire will i become a billionaire in the future that's not how it is the question is being framed you could be a billionaire tomorrow you could be on the road so it is not a question of necessarily what you have today it is a question of like what you are going to have tomorrow and that being the question of yudhishthira bhishma acharya dug into his knowledge which he has accumulated from various sources and introduces this conversation between narada and indra with mata lakshmi and when narada and uh, indra were on the banks of ganga they found this beautiful effulgent lady and they wanted to know who she was so she introduced herself as lakshmi shri bhuti but she also told that she has some other names and we saw the list of names so one some of the names or these are adjectives of qualities which we need in our life she amongst them she talks about shraddha which is basically faith she also calls herself as meda which means intelligence intellect she talks herself as sannidhi which is basically influence vijiti which means victory stiti the one unchanging principle and it's interesting she calls herself stiti when the foundation definition of a common man's understanding of wealth is it's always changing hands that is something to ponder about okay she also calls herself as druti which means patience as siddhi which is basically achievement sambudhi which is basically prosperity samstuti which is basically value niyati which is uh, what you would call as fate or preordained and kriti that is basically the memory 
and we also went through a long list we are not going to repeat it we went through a long list of things which attracts lakshmi to us she gave a big catalog she was not at all stingy or limited in that list she was uh, very very um kind to give the light from different angles and the case in point here is the danavas who are basically kind of like half brothers for the devas because they have the same father but a different mother so the devas were kind of renowned for prosperity but there was a time before the devas got the prosperity the danavas for several yugas they were having all the great qualities and the prosperity so part of the question vasava or basically indra as is why or what happened that change the equation and why are you coming to me basically he is implying tomorrow you may leave me also and go that is his question so part 1 of the do's we looked at it last week this week we are going to look at don'ts things that we are doing that chase lakshmi away from us and i have put a companion article if you are interested you could go and look at it it's attached on the top i think it's a interesting practice that you can always go back and look at an article which also is the foundation of the th- talk so some people have told that when i read the article i can literally hear your voice or because it it kind of like piggy backs on each other so the most important thing is we want to document and give as much resources depending on whatever medium you are comfortable you can use that okay back to the question danavas had a change in their gunas and their and it was reflected in their karmas so what happened the first thing um remember long time back i told you that there is only a change in the direction in one direction let's say that you go on left and right okay we see the same thing in katopanishad shreyas prayas right um bishmacharya in another place he says dharmachari and karma uh, kamachari right he calls that like that so we can also take the essence of both and you can reduce that let's say it goes left or right and if you go on the left you find kama or our desire that is the driver on the right side if you look at it you can think of dharma as the driver so if kama is the driver then it comes with a plethora of other emotions krodha lobha madha matsarya all those things are like they take turns to drive the ship and drive uh, to uh, what is it like uh, ride that vehicle into the ground that's that's the goal and you are stuck in eternal samsara that is the worst case scenario if you are in the path of dharma you obviously are opening higher levels or you go to the higher equilions of dharma eventually you open the door of moksha so here the question is uh, is our the direction and 
Lakshmi says the Dhanavas started becoming increasingly trending towards Kama and Krodha instead of their traditional or usual Dharma. Now, I want today's talk, it almost reflects our reality of our world. So, it kind of will hit a lot of home runs in a negative way. So, I want you to be aware of that. So, it is not a critique of our life today. We are only listing and cataloging Lakshmi's advice. Okay. So, whenever you find a strange coincidence, it is basically um, a weird echo from Lakshmi's advice telling that, hey guys, you are going the wrong direction. I want you to remember that it is not a deliberate attempt on my part. And in this article series, I tried my best because the original advice itself is so much. So I just gave the translation or a limited translation attempt from the original uh, sloka and rather than try to give deeper analysis because it is quite self-sufficient. Then there is an interesting thing Lakshmi says that the Dhanavas stopped supporting meritocracy. That means if a person is qualified to do something, then only you give the task. But today's world, what do we do? So, a person who gets 100 out of 100 in school, exam, whatever, cannot get into a engineering school or medical school because they are from a certain caste, because of their birth. And those people get frustrated, what happens? They go to some other state or some other country. With that goes all that knowledge and opportunity with them. And instead, we find the guy who just got a pass because we want to support the people who are not meritorious. We end up giving that. Now we have all sorts of weak foundation. So now this is something what is happening today. But this was the same thing that was happening with the Dhanavas. Lakshmi says the qualified were replaced by the unqualified. And people who were having qualifications were hated. Why? Because they make you look like a fool. But you have the position. Make sense? So, that is a weird echo from the past that we are on the same track and that's not a good thing. We hope we will change that but we can't really count on that. Then the other thing is the respect for elders is a very key um, aspect unique to Sanatana Dharma, to Bharata Varsha. You won't find that, uh, okay, respecting elders may be in a couple of dharma-influenced countries, like say if you go to Japan or maybe limited parts of China, but they are never venerated the way we do it in Sanatana Dharma. So we all know Mata, Pita, Guru, Devam. So what happens? We respect the Mata, Pita and everyone. But what happens as the gunas change, the respect what a son usually gives for the head of the family, that is the father, we don't have that. Just to look 100 years ago, when we had a joint family system, at that time, the father might have been retired, but he was still the head of the house. That I'm not saying that we may have to return back to that, but it may or may not be possible. But the respect they used to have, that has diminished. And that is uh, going to lead to 
a kind of like a scenario which is not attracting lakshmi it basically repels her that lack of respect for elders then the other interesting thing is dharma is usually the foundation for artha we say like dharma artha kama moksha right that means even the artha is contained in the dharma only but in today's world as in the case of dhanavas money is or wealth is the primary thing that was worshiped eventually so what happened how i get the wealth is not important just the fact that i am wealthy commands respect in the society so that kind of creates the dilemma and conflict with dharma so the society is thinking that ma- uh, money or wealth is more important and the interesting thing is money is the least uh what to say like a uh, visible parameter of lakshmi's presence we don't understand that we saw that last week also that lakshmi is not defined by the bags of gold she is defined by the guna and karma then she highlights an interesting aspect see um when i uh, used to live in bangalore back in the day or in chennai when i grew up at night there would be hardly any traffic on the road if at all there is uh, some traffic or something like that it will be in say in bangalore's case it will be in mg road or in chennai's case it will be in some arterial road where some bus or some noise will not be there rest of the people would go to bed and they will be doing they are focused on their own nitya karma anushthana but today the way we live the nights are no longer nights we are 24 by 7 cities there is a lot of noise in the uh, to add to that we have loud speakers we have this and that so what happens there is no quietude and the worst thing is we make we will be touching a couple of these points again and again because um, lakshmi seems to be in a mood where she wants to highlight the same point a few times so looks like she repeats them in a different instance with a different emphasis so if you are seeing something repeated i want you to understand that lakshmi is putting some emphasis there it's not what i am putting then the other idea is like uh, there is this power struggle right in the family especially when children get married right the uh, father retires and then the if there is a joint family then the children take over and they start dictating things right instead of still respecting the parents it becomes more like a power struggle that i am the money maker so i am going to dominate the affairs with no respect to the parents if that be the case lakshmi says i don't like that equation i don't like that place there are also places see what is the focal point in a in a marriage who is the focal point is it the husband or the wife this is where we drop the ball it is not a husband or wife power struggle or two people come together and the reason why both people are coming together in marriage today is either lust or money or politics or things like that or physical needs rather than dharma dharma should be the glue in the marriage but instead what happens is um it becomes like a power struggle 
and in this case uh, the way she uh, it is obvious to tell um i'm again this is not a patriarchal kind of idea here it becomes a power struggle that it becomes like a woman dominating men now why is she saying something like that to highlight the fact that it cannot be a power play it is not a woman dominated or male dominated both are not accepted what what is the thing she is looking for she is looking for dharma in the equation but to give us an example she it is very easy right if a, a house is dominated by a woman it takes a certain kind of direction so it becomes easier to give that as an example that's that's the reason why i think she has chosen to give that as an example then there is also the idea of i told uh, earlier mata pita guru devam right we respect all so mata and uh, pita and along with that all the elders in the family or in our neighborhood when we see guru this is again the mistake we come from a culture so the um, uh, the, the tuition teacher and the uh, kindergarten um, uh, lkg teacher are all like even when you are um, what is it like a grown up you still call them miss or sir or whatever right now the problem is not that do, i'm not saying that do, stop doing that definitely show your respect to them but here we have a false equivalence to a guru guru is one who opens the door and gives you an understanding about shastras or about dharma or about moksha or about bhakti some of these esoteric ideas then only you call them as a guru so it cannot be like every tom dick and harry my sixth my substitute teacher is also my guru you can't be that is like mockery but those gurus are we giving respect today ha that's where we drop the ball and then there is a concept same way we hijacked the idea of guru we hijacked the idea called atithi we call atithi as guest we don't have the idea of atithi today that would be a joke why because the atithi is a person who comes without any invitation so if i am going from kashi to rameshwaram i just stop by your house i don't announce and when i don't announce i just come i probably stay there or i just partake the food you give me usually you give atithi devo bhava so you give not the waste thing which you want to give you give as if like bhagwan himself has come that kind of concept is gone today that itself is an indicator that we don't have any respect for atithis right because you can't trust that guy who is doing standing at the door he could be the next serial killer too right so the thing is that we are not having that same reverence what we used to have for our mata pita guru uh, for the elders for the atithis for the advisors and so on so on and so forth now the worst thing is i don't know how many of you have seen this tv or social media or um, the phone is the second parent so parents have outsourced the parenting to these devices in the west they uh, hide, hide behind the fact that hey we are giving freedom to our children so that they can be adult so the child does whatever they normally the mother would have taken care and protected and provided or father would have looked at or whatever they hide behind that fact so we don't give 
children also the focus there is no dharmic uh, so are we taking time to feed dharma to the child if the answer is no and if the answer is if the answer to the question is hey my child knows more about the tv programs than about ramayana mahabharata or bhagavad gita then guaranteed you are not only repelling lakshmi you are chasing lakshmi out of this neighborhood and also you are doing special aarti to alakshmi the elder sister right it is like how do you remember this it's like a zip when you zip or unzip right what happens the same thing when in one direction it opens the same thing that goes in the other direction it closes same concept with prosperity or same concept with lakshmi or alakshmi when you are simultaneously closing one thing you are opening the other thing so it it works in that way just imagine that word picture now the other thing is when we give we don't give enough dana we don't uh, do any offering to the devas or the, we are not doing any puja or homa as we should be doing enough and the worst thing is the chandogya upanishad says that even eating your food is a yagna so are you even saying brahmarpanam brahmahavi when you are eating even if you don't know that bhagavad gita shloka simple can you say krishna arpanam vastu before you put the food in your mouth or if you want to say don't want krishna say om namah shivaya that's fine think about om namah shivaya and put the food in your mouth what is you are not going to spend one penny you are not even going to take one second to finish that thought but what happens we are following the example what bhagwan krishna says right you basically consume without even offering then to devas and devatas what who are doing that or for that matter to the pitris you know like or the atithis or the elders you don't want to share it's all about i me myself that kind of eating is what krishna calls as stealing he calls us verily a thief so that is another aspect then comes another interesting thing which uh, has a lot of modern correlation i told you looks like lakshmi uh, took a peek into our lives and gave a list then there is the other thing is we always have as a tradition have given importance to clean cleanliness in eating cleanliness in your food uh, in your of course we always emphasize shaucha which is the one of the four legs or padas of dharma right satya satya uh, uh, dana shaucha tapas right so those are the four pillars on which and the, if we are not focused on that uh, shaucha part if you have food uh, 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 thrown all over the house you know and usually she singles out women but again it's not just women right it's like men and women that's what here she says usually that's the role women tend to take that they cook and they clean right so if the food is scattered everywhere if dry dishes are all over the place you know and interestingly if you really see i when when i was um, i remember um, i think one of the first radha kalyanams i went when i was a child um, very grand way one distant relative they made so we went to the other part of my uh, my uh, town i was so hungry and they said no 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 there is puja this one that and things and then the funny thing was 
kids are normally supposed to be the first one i didn't realize it back then i was a small boy probably uh, six years seven years maybe but i that memory stuck in me that they were first feeding uh, they were kind of like bit uh, what is it like uh, over orthodox like without any foundation you should say so they fed all the brahmanas then they fed all the other people and then they said kids can come if krishna were to be there he would say feed the kids along with because that is when kids are ignored right especially very small kids right it's very important lakshmi says she doesn't reside in those places like i told you what do we give when we are talking about cleanliness look at the food we are eating you go and buy biryani you don't know which uh, um, what is it like blessed by uh, uh, some of the communities what do they do they spit in the food so that it will become a halal for you and we are going to hotel we don't know who is employed where have you seen some of the food videos how these people kick uh, clean one guy was uh, oh my god i can't even describe some of these things and same way some of these communities have, some of them don't have the proper brain some of them are deliberately vicious especially one of the desert cult they wash the vegetables which they sell in uh, in sewer many of them have been uh, videographed so the question is what now what is uh, we are talking about prosperity right when food is not clean you are going to catch diseases a significant part of your uh, time energy and resources are going to go into fighting the diseases so stop going to outside food outside things so i mean like it's it's increasingly gathering more and more the amount of palm oil that goes into your food stop taking palm oil because it is one of the most ubiquitous oils if you are buying snacks from the store 93% chance it is having palm oil and stop buying palm oil in your house that's one of the worst oils you can take worst oils so what lakshmi is talking about here is your ability to focus on your health comes from the food you eat and if you are not even respecting the food you eat and uh, disposing it off uh, after the remains of it and things like that that is going to be an indicator of how you are treating her see we have like a dana lakshmi dhanya lakshmi is also there in ashta lakshmi you have dhanya lakshmi the lakshmi for the grains so how are we taking care now again she jumps back into that night and day thing so many of us are uh, night owls right i see me quite a few here too like uh, uh, um, they are awake through the night or midnight because either we can't sleep we can't do whatever but thing is that we are making day as night night as day and we sleep in the day time lakshmi says guaranteed i run away from that place basically what you are doing when you are converting the day and night if you are saying hey i am in the night uh, what is it like a uh, uh, shift that's not even acceptable for her she says then you go and take another job because what she is saying is you will not be able to do your swa dharma if you don't stick to the diurnal uh, routine we are not owls we are not bats we are humans and then she says like the uh, what is the focus i if you are doing swadharma your focus is inner peace but if you are saying that i am not going to do swadharma i will do whatever i want who are you to stop 
then basically you don't have any respect for that system which includes yourself right that is one thing and then she also talks about marriage not being based on guna and karma of course she uses the word varna mixing up of varnas but i have translated it as guna and karma because that is the the uh, abbreviated meaning of varna right varna is nothing but guna and karma we have been discussing that ad nauseum right so what is the marriage today based on we already saw it's uh, how much wealth i can get from this girl side or that girl side or boy side right we have uh, oh we have kicha also that's great thank you kicha for joining see lakshmi kataksham is already there so the thing is that um, we are talking about what are the things that lakshmi feels as rippling her and she wants to leave that place and go wherever there is no swadharma followed she says that is not the place now she told the marriage because what happens let's say that one person is uh, uh, very uh, vaidik very uh, what is it like uh, uh, into bhakti or jnana whatever they are into astika the other one is a work character now if the work and the uh, uh, what is it like the uh, bhakt get married what will happen to their children you are thinking their child will become uh, a work bhakt sorry there is no such hybrid shimara like that it is not possible so what happens when there is a marriage that is going to happen the emphasis and the focus is always on the guna and karma so that the couple can go along the same direction in harmony harmony should be the foundation of a marriage if it is based on dharma and marriage is the foundation of the society now she also says some interesting words to the brahmanas right she says if brahmanas don't know vedas then they have no value in the society and if there is no pressure from the society to say that hey you can't call yourself a brahmana without knowing the vedas you have abandoned the rigs if the society is not putting pressure then that society doesn't know the value of veda so she is going to leave that society also can you imagine the emphasis of lakshmi there can you so if she were to come today and look at all the namesake brahmanas and doing all this half baked uh, uh, rituals and things like that well be- before going from that place she is going to do something really nasty to them and that's the reason why our society is going in reverse gear it's on a free fall and we are doing everything to accelerate it she also says in such a society where people consider of focusing on the highest knowledge they are now chasing and focusing on menial jobs now i am not saying anything about because i to work in the uh, kind of uh, it background and things like that i need to make a living too right but the problem is that we are giving up on other aspects what we should not be giving up it should not be at the cost of other things and that's what she is taking the exception to okay this one is a big one if you guys are thinking uh, uh, lakshmi is way uh, advanced in time 
this is the one she says in a society where men dress like women how many of you have seen on uh, twitter and uh, social media men dressing in sarees the worst thing is you can't unsee them after you have seen them with a mustache oh my god that's a curse if you have not seen it i i pray that you never see such characters and women dressing like uh, men and basically also this is not just their uh, entertainment but also in their behavior now here we are living in a pronoun society which says that you go to your guy and you say that hey how are you what is your uh, you have to address them in a particular pronoun you don't know what is the pronoun of the day because today he may be a she tomorrow he may be a he and uh, day after tomorrow it will be a mixture so you see this kind of woke like, like, what is it like uh, uh, the valueless society now i do understand that you can be having uh, what is it like a real genuine hormonal problems because i have seen people with that and i sympathize them you know like uh, they they are biologically they are stuck in the neutral uh, neuter gender right what we call the neuter gender right but these are characters that are doing it deliberately the guy is introducing this is my husband to another guy or the lady is introducing this is my wife right so that kind of nonsense that is going on again please don't think that i am not as advanced as not connected with the society i am not condemning them all are only atman that is why only sanatana dharma is the only antidote to all this you are not the body you are not the hormone you are the atman which is beyond the gender only sanatana dharma talks that so you respect the person as the atman so there is no two ways about it but this pronoun society this idiotic society that is based on the confusion they are doing is not one that is conducive for prosperity so take wherever this pronoun society is happening and that is clashing with the hyper orthodox uh, desert culture half their energy is split uh, b- between wasting all this so i can see that uh, living in us i can see that the us is wasting a lot of its resources trying to fix the pronoun of the people rather than the prosperity of the people this is just a total distraction and waste according to lakshmi so i i do, do, don't uh, blame me i am just took a parrot that is only showing the mirror what lakshmi had told that was recounted by bhishma to yudhishthira now what we have been doing is looking at those characteristics that will be able to predict the future prosperity or lack of that's what we are discussing all 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 what we are discussing is the what is going to happen in the future right like a trend analysis or like a future forecasting now if you have seen now these are things if we are already doing it we need to stop that is that is the uh, uh, this entire talk today is a question of like hey we are almost doing 80% of what uh, lakshmi is saying so i may be a karodpati today but what she is saying is you may be a karodpati if you get a, uh, um, a problem in your heart or your liver or something like that go to the doctor he will make you come back to the road so all that karod what happened goes back to the road the karod becomes karoded now here the idea of 
our ancestors they might have given a lot of uh, lands away lot of like if you come to uh, uh, tamil nadu for instance a lot of land is owned by the temples but what these uh, uh, and uh, descendants are doing is they are looting from the temple and they are eating so you might have done some dan in your time but in two three generations later what happens these characters appear from nowhere because of all the pop in that particular family they come and then they say hey you know what whatever my grandfather gave my great grandfather gave that also you give me back pay interest to me when you are seeing those sort of thing and you are seeing that you put the money in the hundi and you are thinking this is for bhagwan and bhagwan's cause and here comes the politician who comes and takes a cut and he is doing something else when you see that that is a sign of lakshmi deserting that place now you are also supporting that cause so she is going to desert us also so we have to be very very careful if we are uh, looking at it okay then the other thing is we already spoke about people who are like uh, this is the interesting thing it's almost like the word and the example she uses it's like almost she looked at what is happening today and she told it like 5000 years ago or rather she told several thousand years ago because <coughs> what what happened in 5000 years ago was only a recounting by bishma <clears throat> so the idea is like a you have a problem what do you do this is the example she is giving i'm just uh, highlighting the example you have a problem what do you do you don't go to the advisor now typically back in the day mata pita guru daivam right you would have gone to your mata or pita and said hey, i have some problem because the societal structure was is more complicated today you can't go to your mother and say i have problems in solving this software so you have to go to a technical person you have to go to an advisor but instead what do you do is you go and ask some friend because it's lot easier and then these friends what do they say hey you know what this is getting too difficult man i if i were you i will just stop this process they don't focus on from the perspective of karma or swadharma they focus more from the perspective of hey you know what it's not something which i can profit or you can profit if you continue in the same way why don't you just give up that and what we do is we just give up so we are this uh, uh, what is it like the the <laughs> idiot who went for counsel with people who are not qualified so in that case what she is saying is this is like abusing or not listening to your advisor or well wisher so kicha has been doing the mahabharatam uh, for the last one and a half years tomorrow also we have vidharunidhi part 2 so the interesting thing is there are three groups of people who get advice in fact i am going to since he is there i am going to take his uh, example um even without his permission but again it's available to everyone okay so i'm just uh, uh, telling that in he was taking this a lot of uh, time last week to explain this so you have three characters you have uh, dhritarashtra three people came same night sanjaya came and hinted hey this is what is going to happen he already hinted nothing went to his head then vidura came and told vidurniti middle of the night it uh, just bounced off his head then he said like hey can you get some real real next level person so sanat sujata came and he gave sanat sujatiya and then this fellow said okay i get all these answers but you know what <laughs> i need to go back to my son because that's all i can understand right so 
देर इज नो पॉइंट इन टेलिंग ऑल दिस टू हिम सो हुज इट ऑल टोल्ड फॉर टू यू एंड मी सेम थिंग विथ अर्जुना see all his doubt was should i fight or not but krishna gave the 700 shlokas so at the end of the day arjuna was like hey should i fight or not you say fight right okay and he forgot everything he not only forget later he forgot right then and there on day 1 day 2 he is like fighting like like very dumb Krishna comes a couple of days later and says hey i am going to go and kill bhishma myself because you are like sacrificing too many of your soldiers you are not even fighting to your potential then uh, abhimanyu vaga happened then he said like hey i am going to kill all this guy the, this bad guy in one day he didn't even ask krishna hey is it possible you are forget krishna as bhagwan he saw vishurupa darshana he didn't even consider krishna as his charity or or his advisor so who was bhagavad gita directed at arjuna was only a nimitta it's us it is directed against and then one interesting aspect kicha was telling between yudhishthira and uh, bhishma i mean like actually he told it partly but uh, i was thinking about it a lot and i and i got the uh, intent what he said see bhishma and uh, yudhishthira are having conversation all what bhishma told yudhishthira already knew there is no need for that but kicha this is the part 2 of the question you raised probably you knew the answer or i don't know if you didn't uh, think that far the reason why um yudhishthira and uh, bhishma's conversation is critical is when you and i have a problem this is the line that connects this is the line from lakshmi that connects the whole thing what do you do if we go to satsanga if you go to a well wisher or an advisor and submit your ego to them even if you know the answer but because you are just confused you know like you may have 20 20 eyesight but something fell in your eye you are uh, like eyes are watery and blurry for that brief second your eyes are something in this. so you just wash, wash it with water and then you get your normal eyesight restored so same way satsanga and whenever you have a problem you go to satsanga wherever they talk about sat bhagwan that paramatma that higher highest factor and was bishmacharya talking about sat you better bet on it so that is the same thing what happens when sita mata was like at the end of her road she said you know what 10 months have gone by no news of rama worse than rama no news no news of lakshmana lakshmana is lakshmi sampanna there is no good news coming right there is no good news coming so what do we do she is like i am going to i am at the edge because this fellow is uh, doing such a serious psychological abuse she says like maybe my prarabdha is not in this form i will see my bhagwan i am going to give it up she is at the end of her road what did hanuman ji do he started chanting ramayana which is basically satsanga so the answer to krishna uh, kicha's question who are this aimed at why what is the need for yudhishthira and uh, to come and ask 
Yudhishthira could have gotten the answer just by contemplation. He is not that dumb, right? He, he is the guy, if at all somebody knew all the answers to the questions that were even, even before the question is set, that should be Yudhishthira. Remember, he is the one who rescued B, um, uh, Bhima from Nahusha. He is the one in the Yaksha Prashna who knew all the answers. He is like that smart kid. Before the teacher could take the new chapter, he knows all the answers. He is like that guy. He is trained personally by Vidura. So, is there anything that Yudhishthira would not have not known what Bhishma had told? The answer is very unlikely. Then, what is the purpose of? Because... Depending on your pain or the problem you are going through, Satsanga alone can give this solution. So, back to the point. What is Lakshmi saying here? When you are turning to your advisors and well-wishers. Now, who is a well-wisher? If that well-wisher or that advisor is teaching to you what is the right dharma for the dharma sankata you are in, for doing the nivarti of that dharma sankata, such a person only is your well-wisher. You go to Mahabharata, you, there is this uh, 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 Kanika. He says, you know what, lie, steal, cheat, do whatever you want, to trick, steal from... Pandavas, kill them, don't no care, no problem. You go to Mantara, what she will say? Hey, take that kingdom away from Rama. So, if you go to those kind of advisors where there is no dharma, they are not your well-wisher. They are accelerating your return ticket to samsara. So, the one who is a good well-wisher, if you are not listening to their words, worse yet, you don't even go to them. In such a place, Lakshmi is not going to stay. That's what the entire uh, end result for you and me is. So, if you say, I don't have such a well-wisher, then just crack open uh, Ramayana and uh, Mahabharata and Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita or Upanishad. You will get all your answers to all your questions. Even if you don't have a physical guru sitting with you, we have all this satsanga available. So, that is a very important one, I think. Now, let's move to the next one. This one is uh, again a controversial one. Lakshmi says, when Shudras are doing tapasya. Now, let me ask you a question. There is a guy who is self-certifying himself as a tapasvi in India. There is a clown prince. How many of you seriously think that he is a tapasvi? If you are, then you really need some damage control. Please approach Nimhans in Bangalore. Okay. Here, what Lakshmi is saying is, we already saw this in the Varna lecture, right? You have the Purushartha, Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, right? So, by default, all of us are Shudras. That means, by default, we are almost always driven and attracted by karma, desires. Now, if you slowly change your guna and karma and then go to the next level, you are thinking about artha and then you are thinking about dharma, you are thinking about moksha. That is how the progression goes. It is not based on birth, it is based on your guna and karma. right? But here, the point what Lakshmi is saying is, if there is a predominance of, we also saw the three gunas, sattva, rajas and tamas, right? If there is a predominance of tamas and a little bit of rajas, 
that's what is the definition of a shudra or a shudra state of mind so what really happens here if a person is tamasic and whatever rajas they are doing is also driven by tamas only such a person if they are going to get into tapasya what will happen what happened to all the asuras who did gor tapasya they were all driven by tamas and they all became the poster child of how and whom the blessing should not be given many of the work will ask if bhagwan knew these are bad guys why did he give that blessing to them to the work you give one nice hit on their head and tell them it is not bhagwan who is blessing it is the tapasya that is blessing them with all the boons and benedictions so when lakshmi is saying a shudra is focused on tapasya it basically is not to say the the fourth varna in the society the lower caste people should be odd, uh, deprived of tapasya it basically says that they have to have a guna karma transformation before they can get deeper into tapasya i hope nobody will come back and say like oh this is a caste oppression uh, then uh, all i can say is hit replay so the thing is that when we are looking at uh, uh, tapasya the focus the primary focus again is dharma what is the guidance dharma then there is this interesting thing right like how many of us know like how modern days if you go to these ashrams and gurus and things like that they are part time gurus and the most time they are into uh, uh, collecting money from different uh, donors so that they can do their pet projects that that that's the job of most modern gurus okay that that's how you will find some of these ashrams are like growing like crazy because they are good in extracting the money with their right donor circle now what happens the role of the guru has changed now instead of the shishya going to the guru and obeying the uh, guru the guru says go wash the cows feed them uh, c- c- clear clear the dung that's how they used to be giving the jobs in their back in their day but today they are not if they tell that the disciple is not going to listen or obey they will just like get lost so the disciples have now become like friends imagine you are giving 1 crore to a ashram to a guru you may be still uh, uh, acting like reverential and things like that what is your mental attitude hey here is my pal if i want any advice i can go to him or here is the person who is creating that ecosystem where i can park some money you see that so when the guru's uh, uh, shishya relationship has reduced to that of friendship not that of guru and shishya the guru also has stopped giving the commandings and the shishyas have long stopped listening to them or obeying them so lakshmi says i abandon those places right then and there right then and there see and also if the guru is saying that hey, you have to go and follow uh, the list of tasks the tasks were given based on your guru, guna and karma remember the story of sudama and krishna when they went sudama went as a bodyguard for krishna he was supposed to take care of krishna right and krishna was supposed to fetch some wood and things like that so the work that is given is part of your uh, guna karma rearrangement process as identified by the guru 
but today if the guru is there they say guru please please get you some nice coffee or maybe can i press your feet can i put the ac on can i give you a fruit so in, instead of trying to focus on your guna karma change it has become like a guru pleasing mechanism and in those places lakshmi says i immediately leave and go i also said the parents are increasingly outsourcing the raising of children to social media and things like that there is also one more thing see when there is a, the earlier deepavali sankranti all this uh, uh, janmashtami things like that the and all these festivities used to be vibrant now you want deepavali you go and order uh, sweets from the nearby store that fellow made it like two weeks ago and he just uh, fakes and tells you oh, i just made it today morning fresh and then you come and uh, do that as a uh, your uh, offering do you think that is going to please bhagwan who are we cheating so we don't even uh, we are, we hide behind the uh, busyness of our life that we don't even celebrate the important festivities this with the, all the pomp and the uh, the religious fervor right another thing we already spoke about the elders right look at most of the elders today 50 years ago there was no old age home in india today every major city has so many old age homes just look at it we are aping the west with no idea with absolutely ridiculous idea in the west the parents can't wait for the kids to leave the house and the kids can't wait to leave faster and the parents become empty nesters and that's when a lot of gray divorce is happening that's another interesting uh, concept right when both uh, people retire that's when they find they are married to two strangers you know because when they were busy raising children they didn't even know who their spouse was and then they go and uh, uh, go to these retirement homes do you know the cost of these retirement homes and worse yet the indian model is even worse and cheap because they take all the money at least in us you can uh, retain that house and you can give it as a legacy as a you can bequeath it to your near and dear in the indian model is even worse these all these old age homes they sense blood what they do is they take the money and whatever money you are given as the capital you can't get it back you can't say like hey after my i die it goes to my son or daughter no uh uh-uh. it just gets swallowed up look how much amount of wealth is getting lost just because we are not even uh, ready to take care of the parents i am telling you because i am just amplifying the message what lakshmi is saying that in ripe old age elders have lost their respect what they definitely deserve and they are reduced to merely begging food from their own children or begging time with them begging whatever now i can understand let's say that if you are in a different country you are in a different scenario you cannot do all those um what is it like uh, things what the parents might aspire i am not saying that you fulfill all their desires 
it may or may not be possible because nowadays the parents in the previous generation are also not idealistic that is even more uh, sad to say so i'm not uh, um, taxing all the problems only on the next generation the previous generation instead of looking uh, when they are at the age where they should be vanaprasthi they are that is the time they start saying that i want this i want that they start behaving like teenagers so it cuts both ways this this word cuts both ways okay then we saw that um, we had talked about this uh, marriage and this uh, uh, how the bride takes control things like that we briefly touched that so this power struggle wherever there is this power struggle in the family that, that's what i would interpret that as when dharma is replaced by a power struggle in the family lakshmi says tata bye bye right now she gives a couple of examples right like uh, many parents go to the extent of even uh, uh, what's it dividing their wealth or whatever i saw uh, i heard from someone who watched uh, uh, it, what is it, the tv debate program whatever they call the, the, the whatever the, that's happening on the tv is really obnoxious but anyway this character came this girl came and she said um what is wrong if my parents have to give me for marriage anyway i want them to give all that money right now as if like it is a right that all the money then she is a single girl she says like all that should come naturally only to me that's not true the father could do anything uh, if it is his earned income he could do but this is how emotional blackmail is happening so whenever those kind of things are happening lakshmi is saying i am going to go farthest from that character even though they may be swimming in money i am going to go farthest from that character um then there is also i i know that i am going to give a exhaustive list of i uh, let me just pause here let me say that couple of other things like the people when other people are uh, going through problems instead of helping them when people are laughing at them people who are ungrateful people who become kind of like non believers right like uh, nastika um people who are more prone to uh, adharma why are they prone to adharma because they are more prone to kama right so all these things like say if again when it comes to food we already spoke not only cleanliness uh, adulteration is a big problem most of the food which we call as packaged food is adulterated Who, why do you need color red forty blue twenty uh, all those colors? Why do you need that? Many times they unnecessarily add sugars to make it. Uh, uh, the recipe is not even calling for it, but just to appeal to your tongue or the shelf life or both, they do that. So let me pass the list of uh, advice of uh, uh, Lakshmi. and continue with our story she gave a much more elaborate uh, list of concepts that ripple her and if you looked at everything is based on guna and karma she didn't say like hey if people didn't do puja for me or if they she if the the, the uh, unlike the desert religion cults right like hey if you go worship that god i will like, abandon you no 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 nothing like that it's all based on guna and karma right then she told one more thing hey all this exhaustive positive list used to be that with that of danavas but when they converted everything into the negative column i don't have 
any more affinity for them so I, it's time for me to pack the bags and I have come here and she says hey by the way when I come I have eight other farms that uh, eight other in 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 the representation she says eight other uh, females or eight other uh, uh, um, goddesses but uh, basically you can take that as eight other uh, uh, forms of the same grace right so the one that is give, must be given the highest importance is what she calls as jaya or one the, what jaya here she the context she is using is um, like expansion like in uh, why is india at the center of uh, all the world geopolitics now because our economy is expanding when the whole world is going in reverse gear make sense so the whole world is going in reverse gear so you so the jaya is always that that expansiveness that prosperity that is expanding the gdp growing that is what is at the primary and then there are seven other things she says one is asha that is like hopeful expectation how many of you hope something better tomorrow but if you don't have any hope you say like oh, okay same boring thing tomorrow also same you know like if you go to the uh, the uh, european north the weather will make you nirasha all the time raining like for example in uk all the time same thing uh, i had a friend in uh, seattle which is a kind of like a temperate rainforest literally uh, same problem all the time not in seattle he was in uh, oregon actually uh, so he said like uh, the rain is there all the time it's all, all the time drizzling it's not it's like it never won't stop so you are only having that frustrated moody climate you know like eh, i don't have any hope but lakshmi says one of the eight forms the seven uh, uh, forms of her is asha other one is shraddha that is faith dhruti or intellect or buddhi right kshanti not shanti kshanti that is contentment vijiti that is uh, victory sannidhi or basically advancement or improvement and kshama forgiveness we saw this list at the beginning when she said who are you she says i am kshama i am sannidhi i am shanti i am druti i am shraddha she told a big list and then now she says hey these are my eight different forms and we all go together it's buy one get one, get all free so the interesting thing here is uh, again she is emphasizing on i i'll put a place holder here we are going to tie that uh, not in the end then indra and narada gave her a wonderful reception why bhagavan was there he went and spread the message and the gentle fragrance everywhere with like a beautiful breeze invigorating all the three lokas all the uh, lokas he spread the cheer and then all the swarga people came and gave such a wonderful warm welcome to lakshmi and because of her graciousness she is going to be here right now what happened here is the interesting part here is the interesting part when the devas were feeling the abundance they showered the same abundance and prosperity on the buloka so what happened it rained properly everywhere there were lot of ratnas that were found in every part of the world you know like they just dig and they got all sorts of gems and precious metals and things like that and whatever good things that happened to devas we were feeling the same overflow effect now here comes the last message bishma said hey 
if you want to know the uh, get the prosperity yourself what you need to do is you go to an assembly of brahmanas now here brahmana by their guna karma and sadhana not necessarily by birth okay and what you do is you read this story to them and ask them hey what is this try to understand that their meaning from them from the actual learned person and here we can thank uh, bhishma charya for giving all that wisdom within that itself but still when you go and approach uh, an assembly of learned people wise people they will give you the insights about the glorification of shri and she will also they will also help you to translate all that this wisdom into the appropriate guna and karma we should follow so we will also attain lasting prosperity that's the phala shruti so again the essence of this entire uh, series is everything is revolving around our gunas karma and the dharma we follow the dhanavas were at the top and they fell to the real bottom they went to the top and they fell to the real bottom all based on their gunas and karma so when we start taking control of our guna karma and follow our swa dharma we are also going to overcome the ill effects of kama krodha the lower feelings and emotions and expressions like say disrespect disrespect to elders or the people who should be respected or hate for other beings right including uh, the elders preceptors and uh, advisors and parents and things like that right and the second uh, part uh, uh, second di- uh, dimension of the same point is it is your responsibility let's say that you are born in a very poor family is there any impediment to your guna karma and sadhana and following swadharma no so it is your responsibility to go and alter your own guna and karma and based on your guna and karma you are going to either attract lakshmi or repel lakshmi so your life and my life our future is in our hands the direction of lakshmi coming into our life or alakshmi coming into our life is all dependent and predicated upon our guna and karma and last but not the least we saw that lakshmi is not the addition of all the wealth in the world that is not what lakshmi stands for lakshmi includes the wonderful attributes like say victory hope faith intellect aspiration achievement right we saw a whole list of characters right like memory and uh, buddhi and things like that right so everything is going to be revolving around our guna and our karma and we are so much indebted to bhishma charya bhishma pitamaha right imagine we already saw that yudhishthira had the least use but he set up the example for us that when you like you, you have a problem what do you do you go to the doctor like you have like a stomach ache whatever you you go to the doctor so same way you have any problem in your life which needs a dharmic correction you go to dharmatmas you listen to satsangas and you focus on fixing your dharma misalignment simple that's your prescription 
So Yudhishthira does that example for us like nobody else. Unlike uh, Arjuna who just did what Krishna, he, he had a doubt. Hey, should I fight the war? Yes. All the other things he forgot. Whereas uh, Dhritarashtra, he had multiple people. He had uh, Sanjaya come and uh, give him the message. He had uh, uh, Vidraniti. He had Sanat Sujatiya. A few days later, Krishna himself came. Along with Krishna came all the other great sages from Narada Maharishi to Vyasa to so many other uh, rishis came and advised. Uh, everything went in one year and went out in the same year only. So, are we following the worst example of Dhritarashtra? Are we going to settle for a mediocre example of Arjuna? Now, don't take Arjuna as a bad person or as a bad student. Here, the limitation is he had one question. He took only the answer for that question. All the other things he said, okay, Leave it to Sachidananda. He is the one who needs the most. Right? So he left all that. So he is okay. He is in the clear. He has no problem. He has the personal grace of Bhagavan. Bhagavan loves Arjuna so much. So he is having absolutely no problem even if he skips that question. Problem is for us. And then let's look at Yudhishthira. And the Yudhishthira's example is what stands out for us. Now, when we now understood that Sri doesn't merely, is not like Kubera, she is not only hoarding all the wealth and says, okay, I'll give it to you and give it to that person. If you understood that the entire residence of Sri, her being attracted to a place, her being repelled from a place is all predicated upon dharma. And where does dharma lead you? To Bhagavan. So, ultimately when you know how to handle Sri, she will lead you to the lotus feet of Sripati. That is Mahavishnu. And that's where she resides permanently in her physical form. So, if you catch that message, then the talk is worth it. Lakshmi has been desperately trying to lead you to Bhagavan Sriman Narayana only. But we get distracted thinking that Lakshmi is money. Lakshmi is flaunting the wealth. Lakshmi is an arrogant display of uh, obscene amount of money and living a life of whatever you want with that money. Whereas Lakshmi has been signaling to us all along you want to come the real Lakshmi, the physical Lakshmi you can see only with Mahavishnu. So let's take a second to think about Bhagavan Sriman Narayana and Mahalakshmi for this subtle reminder that dharma is everything. Dharma is the foundation of everything. And even in that wealth, she has underlined that. And what more we can talk about all the Acharyas like Vyasa and Bhishmacharya who has captured this wisdom, this subtle knowledge and given to us. So our Koti Koti Pranams at their feet and we will conclude this talk here. Jai Shri Ram, Jai Shri Krishna, Har Har Mahadev.